There's a composer in Maine at Bowdoin College. His name is Vinit Shende. Uh, he's written a few pieces for me. And a couple of years ago, he sent me a piece with an idea for a project. And so he took that prelude and imagined that Bach was from Mumbai and rewrote the prelude in the language of South Indian music. It's called Carnatic music. This is a completely different tradition in Western music, they don't have progressions in the same manner that we do. A progression, if you think of, um, <coughs> that's a progression, just a group of chords. They don't have that, so that means they don't have cadences, which is unbelievable, but they have these melodies and these ideas and these rhythmic um, models that repeat in it. Uh, there's so much. The scales are different. Ragas, if you think of Ravi Shankar, and if you think a little bit of the Beatles, they kind of do a little bit of that. Not really. And so, if you hear this, it becomes... So you hear a little bit of Bach, but it isn't Bach. So, Vin sent me this piece, and I love the idea, and I've since premiered three, so I arrange the Bach, and then I play his. So you get Carnatic Prelude number one after Johann Sebastian Bach, and you may hear some Bach, you may hear something else, that's totally fine. I won't judge you, and Carnatic Prelude number one. <coughs> of Southbridge. It's always special to return here and see many friends and people. I've, I must have played here at least a half dozen times over the years and so it's neat to see people and how everyone changes but stays the same. It's just great. So, 
Alan Hovannis um, is actually a local composer. He's from Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, Arlington, Somerville, and that's by Boston. Not quite <coughs> local, local. And, uh, but he was also one of, an extremely famous composer, actually. Um, the BSO performed his music, and he then went to Seattle and finished his time in Seattle. Um, he loved nature and was a very spiritual person with trying to influ bring different sounds together. So there's recordings of whales with orchestra. I'd say it's quite a beautiful piece. This is a little piece of his that you would think would be written for flute because it's called Mystic Flute. It's actually written for piano. And I know, don't ask me. I, he's Armenian, I don't know. And, um, but it's a great little piece and I took the piano piece and put it on guitar and so I thought I'd share it with you. This is only the second time this has ever been performed, so pat yourselves on the back. You know, you're in a very adventurous group of people. And, yes. So this is Mystic Flute by Alan Abbas. Tango, this is the, we're going to skip the next piece, come back to it. This is Tango on Sky by Roland Dion.
In 2010, no, seven, in Southbridge, when I was living here, yes, I lived up the street. What's what street? Edward. Edward Street. Yes, I did live on Edward Street. And um, I started a project called the New Lullaby Project. I started asking composers to write miniatures in the genre of a lullaby. And what that meant was basically it just had to be beautiful. I didn't define what a lullaby was. I let each of them decide. For some, they saw it as a transition from the waking world to the sleeping world. Others saw it as uh, something that you shouldn't hear the end of because you should be asleep. Uh, I have one for Adam and Eve, where their first lullaby. I have a, a lullaby that is inspired by a leaky roof, which for some reason many people can, can connect to. Um, and all of these lullabies have, are written in a different language, uh, musical language, not from each other necessarily, but in, in musical terms we have 12 tone, quarter tone, where I tune my strings very differently. I have lullabies in three voices, meaning three things are happening at once. And those are just musical languages. Some of them are from different parts of the world. So I have Russian, Norwegian, Spanish, uh, Japanese, um, and a few others I'm forgetting, sorry. And uh, today I'm going to play you two, technically four, because the first one is three short lullabies by uh, Koji Nakano. Koji is a composer I actually met in Boston when I was in school at the New England Conservatory. Um, he was there as well, and this was commissioned by the um, International Festival of Arts and Ideas. It was premiered there in New Haven in June. And uh, I approached Koji and asked for a lullaby and told him the basics of it. And he sent me these. And these are inspired by um, a work, a chamber opera that he's writing called The Spiritual Forest. Um, they're much more, I'd say, um, spacious. They're quiet. It's a lullaby. And um, the first movement is called uh, Oyasumi, which means good night. The second one is uh, Koro Karaka Doko. Doka Karaka from where, and then Arigato is thank you. And they're all quite different, so I'll just play each one of them back to back. So, this is the first performance in Southbridge, so turn on your hear, your hearing stuff. I didn't mean A inside that. <laughs> Superman hearing. <laughs> wow! I saw some eyes roll. Okay. Three lullabies.
composer and you'll get an idea of how different um, the languages are. When I say musical language, it it's, can be about the form, it can be about the theory, the idea of how one writes what we call tonal music or non-tonal, atonal music, but there's a world in between and every composer has their own accent in essence and so learning a piece of music you learn a bit about that composer. So the second piece of music learned by a com a, a, from a piece of, a composer is always easier because you kind of learn what they want and it sounds kind of funny but I think this is also one reason why we hear a lot of the same classical music once you've played you know a certain piece over and over again it's really easy to pick up another piece by that composer and so as an artist living in the 21st century like yourselves um, I think it's important that we hear art from the 21st century so I'll keep doing this Hopefully, you know, just think of it. If you fall asleep during this portion of the program, I have already succeeded. <laughs> so, enjoy that. Uh, Roger Eon is a composer who is based in uh, northwest France in Brittany. Um, I met him through my guitar builder, who's also French. And this is his first lullaby for the Lullaby Project. The new Lullaby Project has premiered uh, 55 lullabies. There's a recording. Um, this is number 55. It was premiered on Friday. So you're only the second group of people to ever hear this. So talk it up. All that good stuff. Um, and it, it's fun and I should just jump into it. But So this is Berceuse's uh, Lullaby by Roger Ayon.
happy to answer any questions about the program after the program. Um, I did hear some sighs, and I, I hope that was good. Like, just breathing out, relaxing. I figure we all need a little more sleep. So, um, this next piece. Uh, well, before I go on, who has heard classical guitar? Who's been to a concert of classical guitar like this before? Either mine or others. Good. So you might, for those of you who have, you might have noticed that this program is a little bit different. I don't play all of the standards of Segovia and Julian Bream, though I love them very much. They do a great job, and so I'm doing something else. Except for this piece, this is a standard. This is actually uh, written for piano, if you believe. Yitzhak Albenis was a great pianist, a uh, virtuoso, toured the world, jumped on a barge when he was 16 and got out of Spain. But his writing was so, like, uh, so Spanish. Uh, he was part of a group of composers that would look towards nationalism and look towards folk music for inspiration. Um, that much of his music uh, has become part of kind of folk music in the in the world of folk music. So flamenco players often play his music even though it's written down and it's quite not flamenco, but it sounds so good. Um, and it sounds so good on guitar that we've kind of stolen it. It sounds better on guitar. Not that I'm biased, but I totally am. Um, <laughs> than piano. So this is Sevilla, named after the city of Seville, um, and uh, my arrangement of it.
this last piece on the program is the largest piece, uh, longest uh, piece on the program, The Legend of Hagaromo. And there's a bit of a story to it, so I will tell you it. If you've heard it before, bear with me. I'll make something up to keep you on your toes. Um, this is also the title track to my latest CD, which came out uh, a couple years ago uh, on Stone Records, a UK label. And it's a Japanese-inspired CD, so everything touches Japan. This piece uh, is the reason I made that uh, recording. I heard this when I was in college. I got to go to Cordoba for a festival, Cordoba, Spain, and a young woman played it, and my jaw dropped, and I said, I want to learn that piece. I came home, bought the music, looked at it, and went, not now. And <laughs> years later, I realized I had to do it, um, or else I would have regrets, and I, we don't like regrets. So I learned it. And I'm um, very happy my recording is the first uh, by a Westerner, and it's been a lot of fun to play and share with people. And so now I'll tell you the story. So uh, this dates back to the 13th century, and it's, uh, there's a version for uh, the earliest version is actually a no play, which is traditional Japanese theater. And um, the story goes like this. A young fisherman is out walking on the autumn full moon by Mount Fuji when he comes to a beautiful lake and he looks up in the sky and he sees several maidens flying down towards him. He hides. He's hiding as he watches the maidens land on the lake's edge and they disrobe and are bathing in the moonlight when he realizes that their robes were made of magical feathers. And whoever wears this robe, Hagoromo, is allowed to fly. You can't carry anyone, you can't have any piggybacks, just one person. So he finds the Hagaromo of the youngest maiden because he has been stricken with love. And he steals her Hagaromo and hides it. The other maidens realize what has just happened, and like good sisters, they grab their Hagaromo and they ascend back into the heavens, leaving the youngest in this world of mortals. After a time, she returns the love of the fisherman and they have a young son and she is out walking the sun when the sun starts to sing a lullaby and all of you know that i have a thing for lullabies so this totally makes sense so the words to this lullaby say where the hagoromo is hidden she finds her hagoromo she wraps herself in the empty blue of heaven and ascends back into the immortal world but she is sad she misses her husband she misses her son and she begins to weep and these tears fall to earth and they water a small flower her son had planted her husband had planted for her and it grows big and into the sky and she and he climbs it and joins her in the heavens the tears become rainbows of joy and the young son grows up to be a good king <laughs> there are versions of this story throughout southeast asia where the young son actually i mean the <laughs> the young maiden has to uh, dance to get back her Hagaromo, and that is a part of this. You may not hear all those details, but you may hear the song of the fishermen. You may hear the descent of the maidens. You may hear a dance. You may hear Irish step dancing. I, they're just sounds, and they're just your imagination. Um, I know I want to say something else, but, well, I want to thank Margaret and everyone at the library for having me here uh, again, as well as the Arts Council of Southbridge and the Mass Cultural Council. These things called concerts don't happen uh, alone. I believe me, if they did, I would do them every day. Um, but uh, it takes a good amount of organization. I think Margaret and I planned this a year ago. And so uh, be supportive of your local Arts Council. Join it. Be a part of it. If you like what I do, tell other people to go. Um, I am online, and there's some cards here that have just the social media stuff, YouTube and all that good stuff. And if you leave your email while supplies last, there are stickers, and you can have a sticker. If you write clearly, print clearly, leave your name and email. And I promise not to inundate you with emails, and I don't sell them cheap anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, besides that, this is The Legend of Hagoromo by Keigo Fuji.
cookies, drink milk, you heard lullabies, they all go together. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions and take care and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>